Lord, we lift you high. House of love, can we just go ahead and lift him high? Lift him high. Him brado shikavadi and devrete namaha. Kilega do from the clafrati nevradi la mam brado shikabarati anada. Yes, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Lift him high above the circumstances. Lift him high above that need. Lift him high above that the desires of your heart. Jesus is faithful. Jesus is faithful. We lift you high in this place. We lift you high in this place. We lift you high. We lift your name. We lift your name. Can we just go ahead and just pray in the Holy Ghost? Come on, pray, pray, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray, pray. Pray. Say, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh mystery. Can you just go ahead and shout the name of the Lord in an unknown tongue? Just go ahead. Let's shout the name of Jesus. Let nothing stop you tonight from pressing in for the Lord. Let nothing stop you tonight from meeting with your Father. Let nothing stop you tonight. Kabanata, Helena Mata, Helena Mata, Helena Mambosa, 
Eradiki minambe katiki mamobota aliandeme Elikudubu numa na katheda Arateka na bashika na mama mata Eti kosaka eleti kapaduko mba ateka pesa Uyelebo na mama mana kati elebe kata pele kata pana kati yete Eti kudubu numu dubu numu dikada Alikila hamuta elikila Hili vime na manta Keto pusutu tika barate na mamaleka Rutu kopana dagatisha Oh we judge your faith for tonight We judge your faith for tonight <laughs> Oh we judge your faith for tonight <laughs> We judge your faith for tonight. 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 I am Kambono Vahana Gadabarati Gedevereta Gadabababagatea Lakata. Hey, <laughs> Elete kam brute si kam brete da kabalate ayele kapa ba 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 balate kada barate kada barate elega da kada 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 barata kada balaga da balaga te ya lakata amande shabarate na mama mama mana kam ele ibrahanti ele mam brute si kabada oh we honor you we honor you. Oh, we honor you, Lord. 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 Yes, we declare tonight that you will have your way. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, faithful God. Thank you because tonight is a night of encounter. Thank you for what you are set to do in our midst tonight. We judge you faithful. We judge you faithful. Tonight again we pray. Lord, breathe again upon your word. Tonight again we ask our Father. Let not one life return back the same. Tonight again we ask our Father. Do what only you can do and we vow to give you all the glory. Thank you, faithful God. In Jesus' name, we have given thanks. Can you go ahead and celebrate Jesus as you take your seats? <laughs> Hallelujah. Please let me tell your neighbor, tell him that God is faithful. Yeah, you can do better. Tell the person, God is faithful. Hallelujah. What a blessing to be in God's presence again this evening. Our hall is looking so beautiful. I mean, if I like this design. How I many of you are okay with it? Just that it's doing it. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Our Father, by the help of God, is in Meduguri doing what God has called him to do. And by mercy and grace, I've been asked to bring God's word to us. One thing I want to assure you tonight is that God will reach out to you tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, 
I said, God will reach out to you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Quickly, can we look at Matthew chapter 14? Celebrate this grace and celebrate this honor. The privilege God has given to us to stand on this exalted altar. As I usually say, I think, uh, I'm not taking it for granted. It's a great honor. Please, can you help me? Let's celebrate our Father, wherever he is. Can we celebrate him? <laughs> Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 14, we're going to be reading from verse 28. We'll look at verse 29. Matthew chapter, 20, Matthew chapter 14, we'll look at verse 22 we we'll read through, through to 29. Please, can we read together? Matthew, no, start from verse 22, Sam. Let's start from verse 22. Can we read together? And straight away, Jesus did what? Constrain his disciples to do what? To get into the sheep and go before him onto the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, what happened? He was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves. For what? For the wind was, was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, what happened? They were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for what? For fear. But straight away Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. Let's go. And Peter answered, answered him and said, Lord, if it is what happened, bid me come unto thee on what? On the waters. The next verse. And he said, come. And what happened? And when Peter was come down out of the ship, what happened? He walked on the water and go. Amen. Now I want you to follow me gradually. We are going to be building on something tonight that's something God will be helping us to look at tonight that I'm very sure and convinced in my spirit that will bring deliverance, that will bring help and will bring comfort. Now the place we read, the story we read in Matthew chapter 14 was also captured in the book of Mark chapter 6 from verse 45 to 51. It was also captured in John chapter 6 from verse 16 to 21. Now please I will want to encourage you as you go home at your own leisure please look at these three scriptures, compare the stories because there are several things that were they individually captured that if the Lord help you to see will bring will minister to you for example let's look at John chapter 6 let's look at the account of John chapter 6 verse 21 let's look at how John captured this so there is something John captured he said and they willingly received him into the ship and what happened and immediately what happened? The sheep was at the land where that they went. Now there is something John captured here that Peter did not capture, that Mark did not capture. What John captured here was that when Jesus came to meet them at the middle of the sea and after he might have calmed, this, calmed the storm, John captured that it's like there was a transportation that took place. He said immediately they were at the other side. Now, if you look at the rendering of Mark, let's look at Mark. Let me just show you something briefly. Now we'll come back to, to Matthew. 
Mark chapter 6. Now I'm going to highlight certain things to you and I'm going to ask you to make some certain notes. Just follow me as I go gradually and as the Lord grant us help, we'll begin to run. Now let's look at Mark. Okay, let me just highlight a few things. I'm going to ask you to take note of certain things and I'm going to ask you to write down certain things then we'll begin to fly. Now let's look at Mark accounts from Mark chapter 6 verse 45. Now look at verse 45. He said, and straight away what happened? He constrained them. He constrained his disciple. Okay, He constrained his disciple to get into the sheep and do what? And do what? Talk to me. And go to the other side before him. Now, the first thing I want you to take note is that look at what instruction that Jesus gave to the disciple. He said, get into the sheep and go to the other side before. Go to the other side before unto Bethsaida. Now, the first thing I want you to write is divine instruction. Take note of that word. Jesus asked them to do something. So the first thing I want you to write is divine instruction. Jesus came and gave them a divine instruction. Now let's read on. And when he has sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. Now look at verse 47. And when he was come, the sheep was in the midst of the sea and he alone on the land. Verse 48. And he saw them toiling and rolling and the wind was contrary unto them. Now the second thing I want you to write is this. Jesus gave them a divine instruction. The next thing I want you to write is challenges, opposition, or attack by reason of obeying divine instruction. That is the second thing I want you to write. Challenges, attacked or opposition by reason of obeying divine instruction. Don't worry, we'll explain all that. Now the next thing I want you to write, number three. Now look at the next thing again. He looked, the Bible said in verse 48, he said, and he saw them. Did you see that? And he saw them. The next thing I want you to write is, Jesus is aware of your storm or your circumstances. He said, and he saw them. So, right, Jesus is aware of your storm or your circumstances. And let's look at the fourth thing. Just follow me gradually, we'll, we'll move. I'm still in verse 48. And when he saw them toiling, rolling, for the wind was contrary unto them, and about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them, walking on the water but look at the next line I want you to look at and would have passed them by and would have passed them by now Jesus saw them in a crisis and wanted to help but the Bible said when he came the Bible said and he would have passed them I thought you wanted to help them why did Mark had to capture this? There's a reason for it. He said, and he would have passed them. The fourth thing I want you to write is this. Jesus' intention to help, but would have passed them. Just write it that way. Jesus' intention to help, but would have passed them. Now let's look at the next one. We'll look at it. Then we'll begin to fly. Verse 49. And when he saw, and when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit and did what? And did what? Now, I want you to take note of that, cried out. Because see, in as much as God wants to help a man in a crisis, God also wants you to identify that you need help. Any man that does not know that he need help cannot be helped from God. So the one thing I want you to know is the believers, the next thing I want you to write is the disciples respond or write, the disciples cry for help. The disciples help for, because see, 
Jesus came to them and would have passed them by. Because you see, in as much as God wants to help you, God also wants a partnership. God wants you to identify that you need his help and cry out for help. Any man that thinks that he can help himself cannot be helped by God. Any man that thinks he can help himself cannot be helped by God. So the disciples cried out. Why is it important? I want you to also note that is because in the midst of your crisis, in the midst of your challenges, there is something that you need to constantly be doing, which is constantly reaching out to God in the place of prayer. Follow me. Let's, let's move. Verse 50. For they all saw him and were troubled and immediately he walked with them and said unto them, this is what I want to know. He said unto them, one, be of what? Good cheer. I want you to take note of that. Be of good cheer. Because from this point, it's like Jesus now began to reveal to us the believer's attitude in a midst of a storm. Now, being of good cheer talks about courage. Talks about the attitude of rejoicing. So, the number one believer response to storm I want you to write is that rejoice in the midst of your storm. Number two, he said, it is I. Talking about the revelation of the person of Christ. Because see, it is important for you to know that in the midst of your storm, in the midst of your crisis, if you must still stay true and stay strong, there is a revelation of Jesus that must come to you. That is why Jesus said to them, it is I. So the next thing I want you to write is the revelation of the person of Christ. Then the third thing I want you to write is, you must overcome fear. You see, the Bible is speaking in the book of 2 Second, Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It said, For God has not given unto us the spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. And one thing the spirit of fear does is that the spirit of fear opens up the door for other spirits to come in. The spirit of sickness cannot come upon a man if the spirit of fear has not opened up the door. So, any man that will encounter victory in the midst of his storm must learn to deal with fear. Now, these six things, if we are to look at them individually, is something that's going to take us a lot of time. But for some reasons, and by the leading of the Holy Spirit, we'll be looking at the account of Matthew as concerning the story. Because there is another way that Matthew captured the story that the Holy Spirit will want us to look at tonight. But in the midst of our discussion, I will not be able to touch everything. I will just highlight some certain things I've told you about and will begin to fly. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Now, some weeks back, I was speaking with one of our beloved sisters in this place, and I was talking to her, and I said something to her. I said, do you know that God is faithful? I said to her, do you know that God is good? She looked at me and said to me, sir, I know God is good. I know it is true. But. She added a but to the statement. I was discussing with somebody else. One of the days. And I said to the person also that. Do you know that. God loves you. Do you know that God. Is madly in love with you. And the person looked at me also and said, Sir, I know that the love of God is real and true. But I began to wonder where is all these bots coming from? 
I came to discover that there are certain bots in the heart of many believers. And this bot is there because of certain experiences they are going through in life. As a result of certain challenges, certain attacks, and certain processes that God is taking them to, but they are not conversant with or they are not aware of. And it seems as if, yes, they know that God is good. Yes, they know that God is faithful. But there is a but. Let's take for example. It's like, I believe so strongly that God answers prayer. How many of you believe that God answers prayer? And I know you believe it also. But let's take for example, you meet someone that has been believing God for something. The person has been praying for many years. And maybe since Holy Ghost Miracle Service January, the person has been asking, acting it as a prayer request. Up to now, the person has not gotten the answer. And to make the matter worse, it's like each time the person prays for someone, there is an answer. But when it comes to his or her own, it seems as if heaven is silent. And you meet that person and you said to that person, do you know that God can answer prayer? What do you think they will say to you? Some will say to you, I know. But what? But. Just follow me. I'm going to build on something. It seems as if in the heart of many believers, there are several bots. Many are beginning to question the integrity of God. Many are beginning to question the faithfulness of God. Why? See, it can be very frustrating. Nothing frustrates a believer than an unanswered prayer. It seems as if some now what they don't what they fail to understand is that this bot is beginning to build discouragement in their hearts. Gradually, many are beginning to question certain things God has told them. Many cannot understand why you will receive a word from God. God will tell you. I will bless you at the age of 25. And you receive the word of God. And you are running passionately with that word. And at the age of 24, you are still begging someone to give you what to eat. Many are questioning. Is it that the word of God is not true? Is it that my experience is more valid than the word of God? I said to you, no. Your experience is not valid than the word of God. One thing I'm trusting the Lord to do tonight is to help you understand the season that God is taking you through. Many cannot understand why yet I'm serving God. There are several challenges coming to me. Many cannot put in place why it seems as if you've been believing God for a particular gift of the Holy Spirit. Possibly you've been believing God for the prophetic and uh, you've been praying, you've been fasting, you've been, you, you've been giving your all to it. Yet it seems as if you are not ma making progress. And to make matter worse, you just decided to visit one place and you just saw one boy of 12 years old. The boy was just doing the thing like this. Like this. Like this. Like this. Everything was happening. And you, you just stand and you look, oh God this thing, is it that there is partiality or what? You are questioning, why is it that you are making effort yet there are no results? God have an answer for you tonight. Matthew chapter 14 
Let's look at Mark chapter 14 from verse 22. Let's look at, let's start that and look at, let's look at divine instruction. Now look at this place. Because many are beginning to question and begin to ask. Because of the crisis they are going through in their Christian life. Because of the challenges they are going through. So many are beginning to ask, am I in the center of God's will for my life? Why is this attack so much? Why are there all these challenges? Look at Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. He said, And straight away, Jesus did what? Constrained his disciples to do what? Get into the sheep and go before him unto the others. And now listen. This is Jesus. He came to his disciples and gave them a divine instruction. It's like the disciples received a word from God. God spoke to them through Jesus and said to them, get into the sheep and get to the other side. And the disciples in obedience to the instruction that Jesus gave to them decided to embark on a journey. And in the process of their journey, what happened? What happened? The storm showed up. No, maybe I need to let you know that the decision to get into the ship was not the decision that the disciples made by themselves. That the disciples were on the waters at that particular time. It was not of their own will. It was Jesus that spoke to them and said to them, this is the word of the Lord for you at this moment. Get into the sheep and get to the other side. And in their obedience to carry out the instruction of God, the Bible says, they encountered a storm. Because why is this important? There are three sets of persons the Lord will want me to speak to this evening then we progress. Many of you have thought that one way to know that God is in a matter is that the thing will go smoothly. But something I want you to know tonight is that you can carry the word of the Lord and be running yet challenges will meet you. You can have the word of God. God might have said something to you and it is possible you are at the center of the will of God carrying out the instruction of God yet hell will break loose. It is important you know this because so many of us they've told us because you are also thinking if it is God that spoke to me, the door should just open. If it is God that said to me, go to that office and submit that proposal. You are thinking that once you get to the office, everybody will just be shaking you. Come and sit down here. Come and sit down here. Come and sit down here. And when you went there, the first thing they said to you is, guy, go and sit down there. And you are wondering, why is this opposition, even though it is God that spoke to me? You are wondering, why is this challenge? Even though I am sure that I am in the center of God's will. I want to say to you tonight, that you are a believer is not an indication that the devil should not try you. Because some of these bots that we've been asking, some of these questions we've been asking is because we have failed to know, we have failed to understand that a man can still be running with the instruction of God, yet encounter several challenges. It's just like, for example, somebody in this place, the Lord now said to you, I want you to start a business. 
And you said, what kind of business will I do? And you decided, you said, okay, I will start a granite business. And you prepared your granite. And possibly you brought one bottle to our father. And said, daddy, the Lord laid it in my heart to start this business. Please look at it. This is your own share. And possibly our father received it and blessed you. Your own intention or your own mindset is that since it is the Lord that instructed you to start the business, and possibly if daddy have taken it, the next time you come again, everybody will just be rushing you. Hey, have you bought that anointed granite? Eh? Have you seen the anointed granite? You brought it. It was only you and your family people that bought it. You are questioning. Did I hear the Lord correctly? Am I sure that the word I received was from God? If it is from God, they would have known that it is the Lord that spoke to me when I was sleeping. My son, my son started a granite business. And every place you enter, people will just open door and the thing will just be selling. Now I said to you as I begin to progress, every word from the Lord that you receive is not a license that you will experience a trouble-free life. I know some of us don't want to hear these kind of things. Every word of God you receive will surely be challenged. Now, there are three kinds of challenges that can come to a man. A challenge can come to a man as a result of his disobedience, as we saw in the life of uh, Jonah. A challenge can come to a man as a result of the devil attacking that man. And hear me, friends. A challenge can come to a man as a result of the process God has ordained that he must pass through to his glory. Hear me because I want to speak to some set of persons that in, are in the midst of a crisis in this season of your life. It's like there are troubles everywhere. He said, one thing you must not fail to do in the midst of your crisis is to know this challenge, is it as a result of my disobedience? This challenge, is it an attack from the devil? Or this challenge, is it a process I must pass through to my glory? Hear me, child of God, for every glory there is a process to it. For every glory, for every crown, there is a process God must allow you to pass through. But you see, the funny thing is that many have failed to see the fullness of the manifestation of the word of God for their life because when God gave them the word, they encounter a challenge and they stopped. The first kind of persons that God will want me to speak to here tonight are those people that received a word from God and they were running with the word but challenges came and they gave up the word. Jesus gave them a divine instruction. Get into the sheep. Get to the other side. But challenges came. Maybe you are here. God gave you a word. God told you that I'm going to use you to heal the sick. And you started running with that word. You were passionate, you were praying, and you prayed for number one, nothing happened. You prayed for number two, nothing happened. You prayed for number three, nothing happened. And you gave up on that word and you said, if it is, it is the Lord, everybody I prayed for would have been healed. And you gave up on that word of the Lord and you have stopped pressing. The Lord sent me to you this morning. A young sister, the word of the Lord came to you. The word of holiness came to you while you were in secondary school and you began to run with the word. You were on fire for Jesus. You were following so hard after God. But when you came to higher institution, attack on that word came and it came in the form of your friend that said to you, Sister, this your holiness, holiness. Is it not too much? And before you could answer, he tell, he, the person answered you, it is too much. 
are you the mother of Jesus? Before you could answer, the person tells you, remember your name is not Mary. Can't you loosen up a little? That is how you loosen up from the word of God. Look at where your life is now. Mighty men have missed opportunity to do mighty things for God because the word of the Lord came to them and opposition came and they stood by the way. Mighty man of fire, the Lord revealed to you that I'm going to use you and take you to places. I'm going to use you to conquer nation. The Lord spoke to you in your place of prayer. In that little place where you were crying and seeking the face of the Lord. The word of the Lord came to you and said to you, I'm going to use you to change the nation. I'm going to use you to transform the nation. And you received the word of God and you were running with it. You were passionate about it. But the challenge showed up and he showed up like a lady and you went into her and that is how from that day to now you are still in the stream of fornication you forgot the word that the Lord said to you I came to you tonight don't stay in that place you can rise up again you giving up on the word of God because of attack it says there is something the Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 4 verse 14 he said for persecution ariseth for the word's sake hear me friends that you carry the word of God in your bowel that you carry the word of God in your spirit is an indication that the devil will come after you So have you given up on the word of God because of a challenge? These are the first kind of persons the Lord will want me to speak to tonight. Friend, you can rise again. Yes, it is common to face challenges, but it is not expected that the challenges should swallow you up. It is natural that the word of God should be challenged in your life. second kind of persons I want to speak to are those that are currently facing challenges oh as a young sister the Lord said to you by 28 you will be married possibly the Lord did not even say anything to you maybe you were studying the word of God and you came across certain scripture that spoke to you and you confessed in faith and said Lord I'm believing you by 28, something will happen. And by 27, you are not 27, nobody is saying anything. You are doubting, you are asking, is it God that actually spoke to me? Somebody is asking, am I truly in the center of God's will for my life because of the challenges I'm going through? I want to say to you, friend, you are still in the center of God's will. It's only a process. Somebody is questioning, Lord, can I? These things that I'm seeing, problems everywhere, hardship everywhere, persecution everywhere. As a young person, you made a decision that you want to serve the Lord, but there are persecution coming to you from your family side everywhere. You are asking, Lord, am I still in the center of your will? Lord, am I still doing your will? Hear me, friends. Let me say this to you. You don't judge if a man is doing the will of God by the reason of the circumstances surrounding that man. No. I want to say to you, if you are in the midst of any crisis, God is coming up for you tonight. I said, God is coming up for you tonight. And maybe as a young person, you are here. You've not encountered anything. You don't know what is a challenge. You are thinking nothing will come. I want to say to you, prepare because they will come. As long as you have made a decision that you want to press higher for God, surely challenge will come. Surely the devil will come after you. 
as long as you are now praying and fasting, pressing hard. The devil is saying, who is that young man that is doing this thing? Let's go after him. Let's go after her. So if you've not come to believe this, I want you to know that a man can receive the word of God and yet challenges will come. Let's look at Acts chapter 16. Let me show you one more scripture then I'll begin to progress. Acts chapter 16, 9 and 10. Acts chapter 16, 9 and 10. Oh, thank you, Lord. He said, And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There was stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over unto Macedonia and do what? Help us. The next verse. And after he has seen the vision, immediately he endeavored to go into Macedonia. Assuredly, gathering that the Lord has done what? Had called us to do what? To preach the gospel unto them. Look at verse 22. The Lord gave this man a vision and gave him an instruction. But look at what happened to them in verse 22. And the multitude rose up and gathered against them. And the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to do what? To beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they do what? They cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them what? Safely. Many of you would have think when the Lord asks you to go to Narayi to go and preach, once you enter Narayi and begin to shout, repent! Repent for the kingdom of God. Everybody will be coming out from every look and crown. God gave them the word. But there was challenges. That is the first thing I want you to understand because we begin to know how to deal with them. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9, it said, A great and effectual door is open unto me. But there are what? There are many, many adversaries. But hear me, friends. Go back to Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. Let's look at what that instruction of Jesus. And straight away, look at the words. The Bible said, and Jesus did what? Constrained them. Message Bible said, Jesus insisted. It seems as if the disciples objected the instruction to go to the other side. Because I want you to understand that these men were professional fishermen. They were not bankers. And as such, they were conversant with the weather. They can dictate when a storm is coming. Possibly when Jesus said to them, get into the ship and go to the other side. Maybe one of them would have said, Master, there is something I'm seeing. This is not the right time to go. But the Bible says, Jesus constrained them. Jesus insisted that they should be at the storm. They should, they should enter the ship. And when they started traveling, because there was something they failed to understand. The instruction that Jesus gave to them was get into the ship and get to the other side. The instruction was not get into the ship when you get halfway, you should die on the way. What Jesus told them was get into the ship and do what? Get to the other side. Hear me, friends. God's word is true no matter what. If God said get to the other side, you must always get to the other side. You see, one thing the disciples failed to understand was the person that gave them an instruction. They failed to understand that this is Jesus. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 that all things were created by him. This is Jesus. The Bible says upholded all things in Hebrew chapter 1 and verse 3. Every word that Jesus speaks carries the same power. So if Jesus tells you to get to the other side, in that instruction is the power to see to it that that instruction come to pass. So they fail to understand the full scope of the instruction that Jesus gave to them. 
Maybe as they were struggling in that place, I, 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 I want to assume Jesus looking at them saying, because from the place we read, Jesus said, the Bible says, and he saw them. I was looking at Jesus saying, what I told you was not get into the sheep. When you get at the middle, you should die. I was looking at Jesus maybe saying, what I told you was get into the sheep and get to the other side. That there is a storm. It's not the reason why you should stop. That I told you to get to the other side. I mean you should get to the other side. I want to say to somebody tonight, it doesn't matter the storm that have come to you by the reason of you obeying the word of God. The word of God is ever true. If God said he will bless you, he will bless you. If God said he's going to promote you, he will promote you. No word of God is, 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 is should be taken for granted. The Bible says, has he spoken and shall he not bring it to pass? God is not a man that he should lie. If he said, get to the other side, he will get to the other side. And in the midst of their crisis, the Bible says, and Jesus saw them. And in a bid to rescue them, Jesus would have decided to calm the storm in any way. Oh, he might have stayed where he was and said, oh storm, peace be still. And that would have happened, true or false. He would have just said, oh storm, I command you to stop. But the Bible said, no, he did not. He began to walk on the water. He began to walk on that storm that seems as if he wanted to kill them. I want to say to somebody tonight, it seems as if you are in a storm. Jesus is walking at the very storm that wants to destroy you. Oh. You are the wisdom before time began. You and forever your word is ever true. You are the wisdom before time began. You and forever your name is ever great. You are the wisdom before time began. You reign forever, your word is ever true. You are the wisdom before time began. You reign forever, your word is ever great. You are the wisdom before. Can we sing that song two more times? You reign forever. Oh, yes. Your name is ever great. Your word is ever true. Lord, you reign. God is coming through for somebody tonight. You reign, you reign. Your word is ever true. You are the wisdom. Let's say it again. Oh, you reign forever. I don't know whatever may be your storm tonight. Jesus is walking in the midst of that storm. Jesus is walking in the midst of that storm. You reign, you reign. Hear me, the word of God is ever true. God is not ignorant of the storm you are in. God is not ignorant of the challenges you are going through. I have a word for somebody tonight. God is walking in the midst of that storm to you. 
I have a word for you tonight. If the Lord said to you, get to the other side, it doesn't matter by any means the Lord will come to you in the midst of that storm to ensure that you get to the other side. Let the devil roll up. Let the challenges come. If God has said something to you, I have a word for you tonight. God is in the midst of that storm. If he said, go to the other side, God will surely ensure that you get to the other side. Oh, yes, I know the pain is too much, but that pain was not meant to kill you. I know the pain is too much. I know the crisis is too much. I know you cannot understand. You cannot explain why you are going through the process you are going through. But if it is the word of the Lord that you received, if it was the word of the Lord that you heard, if it was the word of the Lord you are working on, I say to you, God is not ignorant of that storm. God is not ignorant of what you are going through. You are the reason before time began. You reign forever. The Lord is lifting burdens from people. The garment of sorrow is being lifted up from somebody now as I speak. It seems as if there is depression. You're getting depressed by the reason of the things you are going through. Joy is breaking forth in your spirit now. God is coming up for you. God is coming up for you. I hear the Lord say, my daughter, I'm coming up for you. I hear the Lord say, my daughter, I'm coming up for you. I hear the Lord say, my daughter, I'm coming for you. I am in the midst of that your crisis. I am in the midst of that storm. Just lift those hands to Jesus. The Lord wants to put an end to some storms tonight. I don't know, the Lord keeps saying there is somebody that is carrying the garment of sorrow. It's, 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 it's heavy on you. The Lord wants to lift up that body now. Spirit of God. Spirit of God, Spirit of God, Spirit of God, Spirit of God. You spoke about a person carrying the burden of sorrow. This sorrow have accumulated because of what the person is going through. We said you are breaking loose that person tonight. Wherever that person is now in this hall, by my right, by my left, and my front, 
behind whosoever is carrying that body and I declare you loose now the loose in the name of Jesus I command that body and go now be free in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus hear me friends you don't judge the faithfulness of God by the reason of what you are going through yes there may be storm in your life but God is still faithful yes you may not understand why you could lose your father at an early stage you could not understand why your sister should die the way she died and you are asking question and it seems as if there is no answer but I still say to you tonight God is still faithful Oh, Habakkuk said, though the fig tree does not blossom, though there be no fruit in the vine, it seems as if nothing is working. I still declare to you, God is still faithful. We judge you faithful tonight. We judge you faithful tonight. Great is your faithfulness. Oh Lord, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with you. Thou changest not thy compassion, if they not. Born forever will be great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning, my morning, you mercy I see. Oh God, oh God. God, oh God, Shamamana Balaka de Barataga, faith come. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, on to me. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning. New mercies I see All I've needed Thy answers provide Great is thy faithfulness Lord, unto me Great is thy And everyone sing together. Great is thy faith. Can everyone sing that song to Jesus? Great is thy faith. Morning by morning. I'm here to shame the devil and tell the devil. We are not giving up on God, irrespective of the circumstances. We will not give up on God, irrespective of the storm. We will not give up on God. God can do it 
again and again and again is the same God today as he always has been yesterday and today and forever the same there's no reason to doubt God can do it again right wherever you are can you just declare Lord you are faithful tonight can you just go ahead and declare the faithfulness of God tonight and we'll continue the message just declare Lord you are faithful just declare Lord you are faithful Lord I still judge you faithful Lord I still judge you faithful I am not giving up on you Jesus I am not giving up on you Jesus just go ahead go ahead We'll continue the message, but let us allow the Holy Spirit to do what he wants to do tonight. Can we just go ahead? One thing the Lord wants to do at this moment is to renew the faithfulness of God in the heart of someone. Someone has come to an end point and it seems as if the person is doubting the faithfulness of God. All God wants to do at this moment now is to still tell you that I'm still faithful. Jesus of worship. Have your seats if you can. Let's see where we can rush to one. Wow. In the midst of my storm, what should I do? Let's go quickly and see where we can reach tonight. Where I really want to stop at is verse 29. Let's see if God will allow us to get to verse 29. Oh, thank you, Lord. Let's go to verse 27. When you don't understand what you are going through, you see, when Jesus came to them walking on the waters, when Jesus came to them in the midst of their crisis, there is a word that the Lord said to them, I want to say to you again this evening. Jesus said to them, be of good cheer. To be of good cheer is to be courageous. To be of good cheer is to rejoice in the midst of your crisis. You see? God or Jesus wanted to perform a miracle or storm, calm the storm for them. He said to them, be of good cheer. Hear me, friends? When you are going in the midst of crisis, you don't know what to do. It seems as if you are prayed, nothing is happening. There is a time where you just need to rejoice. There is a time where it seems as if nothing is working. All you need to do is to lock yourself in your room and you just give the Lord a crazy dance. Hear me, friends. Whenever the devil brings a challenge to you, never allow the devil steal your joy. Hear me, friends. One thing the devil wants to achieve anytime he brings an attack on a man is to make him to question the conf his confidence in God. But hear me, friends. The Bible is speaking of Paul and Silas. They were in the midst of a crisis. They prayed. 
And the Bible said at midnight, they decided to do something else. Hear me, friends, you may not have the right song to sing, but just keep dancing until the song well up in your spirit. Hear me, hear me. If the devil succeeds in taking your joy, the devil has succeeded in crippling you. In the midst of that crisis, there is need to cheer up. Because you see, one thing about cheering up is this. Jesus wanted faith from them. But you see, faith is not, faith is not that thing that rejoices only when he, faith might have seen the answer. No, faith rejoices even when he has not seen the answer. Jesus have not yet come the storm. They were still in the midst of the storm. The crisis was still there. But he was telling them, rejoice. Because there is a way that faith operates. Faith does not wait to see the answer before faith rejoice. Hear me friends, you may not wait to see. If you must not wait to be pregnant before you rejoice. In the midst of that crisis, you can lock up yourself. Hey, come on, brother. Kahila damarateka barateka. You can lock up yourself in the room. And maybe for me, somebody like me, at this particular time, Geophilo Sunday may not may, may not may not may not come up. At this time, for me, somebody like me, it is Choma Jesus that will come up. You lock yourself in the room. Nobody, you may see the drum don't need to play anything. There is a there is a joy that should well up from your spirit in your inner room in the midst of that crisis when the devil think you should be crying. You raise a song in the night to our mama and you dance to the Lord. Hear me. Somebody must go home and dance. Give the Lord a crazy dance. Hear me and hear me well. Let the devil be crazy. Let the devil think that if you don't have the school fees, the intention is to see that you don't have school fees. And you'll be going with a frown face. You will you be saying, this God, eh, is he real or is not real? No. A set of people must arise. Whether God give them school fees or God does not give them school fees, God is faithful. In the midst of that storm, they raise a song and they dance. They dance. Jesus said, Cheer up! Cheer up! Hear me, friend. Somebody needs to rejoice. Somebody needs to rejoice. Oh, you need to rejoice and let the devil be crazy. You need to rejoice and let the devil be mad. Let the devil be mad. The devil think he can stop you. The devil think he can stop you. The word of the Lord is coming for you tonight. Rejoice. 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 Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 14. Hear me friends. You don't need melody to dance some kind of dance. Some kind of dance does not need rhythm. Some kind of dance does not need song. If it is Choma Jesus that come dance it. If it is a Yoruba song that come dance it. In any way dance to the Lord. In any way make a melody. If you must come out of that storm. You must rejoice. Jesus said, Cheer up. Ah, Jesus. Why can't you wait until you stop the storm before you tell me to cheer up? No, 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 no. That is not how faith works. Jesus, I am still in the midst of storm. You are still somewhere else. You have not yet gotten to me. Why telling me to rejoice when I'm not yet pregnant? Why telling me to rejoice when I don't have food to eat? Why telling me to rejoice when I don't have a school fees? Why telling me to rejoice? Jesus!
I thought the way is that when the Lord do it, you will not come and share testimony. No, 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 no. Faith sees it before they receive it. Ah, no, no, no. If it is faith, you must rejoice before you get it. Waiting to receive it before you rejoice is not faith. Waiting for the storm to be calm before you can rejoice. No, that is not the way. Jesus said to them, in the midst of the storm, be of good cheer. Rejoice! of joy for some pe three persons now. Baptism of joy. The Holy Ghost is baptizing three persons. There is a baptism of joy coming to you now. 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 You must tell the devil, I will never lost my praise. I will never lose my joy. Hear me, look at again. Jesus said to them, rejoice. Why should they rejoice? Look at the next line. Let's go back. I'll come back to you. I, I have a cook if I see it. He said, rejoice. Why should I rejoice? He said, what? It is I. It is I. If I've done it before, I can do it again. That is why you should rejoice. It is me, it is I. Why should you rejoice in the midst of your crisis? Because there is a fresh revelation of Jesus that is appearing to you in the midst of that crisis. It is I. Help me tell to your neighbor, it is I. You need to know because what it means is this, that if I have done it before, I can still do it again. Ah, the Bible speaking in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. It said, Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. Rejoice. He said, it is I. He said, be not afraid. Oh, let me fast forward a little bit. I'll come back to that. It seems as if when Jesus told them to rejoice. Because you see, when a man begins to rejoice, he gets a better picture of God. One thing the devil wants to keep you in that sadness is that in that depression and sadness, there is no way you can see God. That is why when Jesus said to them, rejoice, it's not said what? It is I. Because one thing rejoicing does is that it makes you to see a better revelation of the person of Christ. And it seems as if when Jesus gave that instruction to rejoice, woo, it seems as if Peter got that instruction. Look at the next verse. Sit down. Sit down. Let's go. I'll come back to fear because I'm going to deal with fear shortly. But let's look at the next verse. I am under cover, cover, my God, my God. Mark chapter fourteen. Now let's go. And Peter answered him and said unto him, "No, let's go to verse twenty-seven first. Twenty-seven. Ah. But straight away Jesus said to them, we can start from verse twenty-five. There is a word I want to pick from there. I'll come back to being afraid." And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went onto the sea, walking on the sea. Proceed. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, what happened? They were troubled, saying what? Saying what? It is a spirit. And they cried out for help. Please don't forget this. And they said, it is a spirit. Look at the next verse. Now Jesus now said, but straight away Jesus spoke unto them, saying, be of good cheer. It is what? It is I. Be not afraid. See, before Jesus spake this word to them, they saw Jesus walking on the water. They assumed and said, No, 
what spirit is this? It's a spirit. And they were afraid. They could not tell if it was Jesus or it was a spirit. But look at something. But immediately Jesus spoke a word to them and said, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. What happened? The next verse, the Bible now said, Peter now spoke up. He said, And Peter said unto him, Lord, if it is you, do what? Kabanakaya. Peter, what are you saying? We are not sure if it is a spirit or Jesus. Why make this kind of audacious statement? Lord, if it is you, bid me to come. I want to perceive the other disciples saying to him, Peter, you like taking risks. We are not yet sure if it is Jesus or a spirit. And this one now that is telling you to come, you don't even know if it is a spirit or Jesus. But it seems as if that time Jesus told them to rejoice, Peter rejoiced. And he began to receive a better picture of Jesus. It's like Peter said to himself, there is something about Jesus that is different from other spirits. I can take the step I want to take now, even though I'm not sure if it is Jesus or a spirit. There is something I will use to know, and that thing is in his word. Lord, if it is you, bid me to come. Because Peter know, and it's the same thing I want to say to you. There is something different about the word of God and the word of spirits. There is something his word carry. And Jesus speaking in the book of John chapter 6 verse 63. He said it is the spirit that quickeneth; The flesh profit nothing. The word I speak unto you. They are spirit and they are life. There is something Peter know. If it is Jesus. If it is his word that asks me to come. I can launch my life into it. Because in his word there is life. In his word is the ability to bring to pass everything he has said. Spirit can tell you to come, but your word are not life-giving words. Spirit may ask you to come, but you cannot back on on their word. Their word does not carry the, the ability to sustain you on the word. If it is Jesus that asks me to come, I, I can step on his word. I, and once I step on his word, I know I will not sink. Hear me, friends, as I begin to round up. This is the aspect that God wants me to speak tonight. Hear me. Peter was in, the, was in that boat with everybody. Any man that must see the supernatural hand of God must learn to overcome fear. Everyone might have been thinking, ah, should I step out or should I not step out? Hear me, any man that have ever done great things for God is that man that came to the point in his life and said, if I perish, I perish. Hear me, if you must become a great and mighty man in the hand of God, you must come to that point where you are no longer afraid of death. Jesus said, be not afraid. And Peter, when he heard that word, I step out of the boat. Hear me, friends. Hear me. See, I'm believing the Lord that the time will come death will not be a threat to the kingdom of God. Threat, death will not be a threat to the body of Christ. You see, death is a spirit. Believers can have victory over death. I'm believing the Lord so strongly that it will come, time will come in the body of Christ that men will not be afraid to die. Hear me, friends. If you must be a mighty tool in the hand of God, see, you must come to that point where you decide to take the step of faith even though you don't know where you are going to land. See, I... There is a victory over that I'm believing God and trusting that the Lord will bring to the body of Christ. You see, if death wants to kill, there are several tools that the death, the death used to kill. I'm believing God that it doesn't matter whatever weapon of death, whatever weapon the devil will want to use on the body of Christ to kill them, men will say, 
I choose when to sleep, not when to die. Let me show you a scripture. Daniel chapter 2. There is a scripture the Lord I would have loved to go. I wish if I have time. Daniel chapter 2 verse 27. Let me show you a scripture then we'll begin to pray. I, look at Daniel chapter 2 verse 27. Sorry, Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. If you must do great things for God in this end time, you must exercise victory over the spirit of death. Look, and the princes and governors and captains and the kings and counselors being gathered together saw this man. Look at this. Look at that line. Saw this man upon whom what happened? Upon whom? Whose body was? Speak, read out. Fire, do what? Had no power. See? Fire is a tool of death. You see, a man can be burnt eh, and still refuse to burn. You see, and believe, I believe this so strongly. At the point we come, a man will be shot a gun as a tool to kill him. The man will receive it and yet not die. I'm praying strongly for it. You see, in the body of Christ, let me say this and we'll begin to pray. When a man passed to glory, what, would, what did we say? The man, have gone, the man have done what? Talk to me. When somebody passed on to glory, what do we say in the kingdom? Talk now. Eh? Some of you are afraid whether you get an answer. He's sleeping, true or false? He's sleeping, true or false? I want to ask you a question. Do you force a mature adult to sleep? Who do you force to sleep? Somebody like Michael. Eh? That they force you to sleep is two things. Either you are small or you are sick. Please go and sleep. When do you sleep? You sleep when you feel you might have finished all your assignment. You give your wife a kiss and said, I want to go and sleep. Hi, you didn't get it. You don't force a man to sleep. And if our departure is sleeping, then nobody should force you to sleep through death. I'm believing God that before a man will depart, he said like Paul, I have finished. I have finished. Is there anyone that is remaining? Jesus said it is finished. Then I can go and sleep. No, not that somebody came and strangled you. No. You can be like John. They can put you in hot water to burn. You will burn and still you say, I will not sleep. I will not sleep. I'm praying for that time. I will not sleep. I'm also praying. The Bible says something in the book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 8. When Jesus gave them the command, he said, He the sea, cleanse the leper, raise the dead. I'm also praying for that time. It seems as if, Healing the sick is common now in the body of Christ. I'm also praying for that time. Where raising the dead is like healing headache. It will happen. I'm telling you, it will happen. It will happen. But hear me, friends. If that will come to pass, like Peter, you must step out of your boat. Many of you have been in your boat for too long. You have been in the place of analysis. You've been praying, it is now time to take action. That is the thing the Lord wants me to say to you. I know you've been praying that you want to heal the sick. It is now time to begin to take action and begin to go to hospital and pray for the sick. Until a man takes the step of faith, he can never see the miracle hand of God behind. One more scripture, then we'll begin to pray. Second Kings chapter 7. Second Kings chapter 7. I will round up with this scripture. Oh my God. Just go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. Somebody will live here with de taking dangerous steps. Those ideas that the Lord has placed in your mind, it is now time to act on them. 
It is now time to take action. Oh, Lord, I will no longer limit you by staying in one place. I take action. I will no longer limit you by being afraid of the unknown. God has been telling you to start a business since last year. You are afraid. How? How will you prosper? You must conquer fear. Woo. Amen. Okay, please, let's rush this scripture and we'll begin to pray. Second Kings chapter 7. Let's look at from verse 1 to verse 6. Then we'll begin to pray. And Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall be what? A measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then the Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord will make windows of heaven, might this be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thy eyes and what will happen and shall not eat thereof. Let's go. And there were four leprous men at the entry of the gate and they said one to another, Please, let's echo this together. Why sit we here until what? Until we die. Let's proceed. And if we say, if we enter into the city, the farmer is in the city. And what will happen? We shall die there. And if we sit still here, what will happen? We will die also. Now, look at that. Now, therefore, come. Let us do what? Fall on the host of the Syrian. And if they do what? If they save us alive, what will happen? We shall live. And if they do what? Now, does this look like a dangerous situation? Does this look like they were face to face with death? Look at the next verse. Then they arose in the twin light. I will not have time to explain everything. I will just highlight one or two things. Then we'll begin to pray. And go unto the camp of the Syrian. And when they were come to the outermost part of the camp, the Syrian, of the camp of the Syrian, behold, there was no man there. Look at the next verse. For what? For the Lord has been. Now go back to verse 4. Let me point something that will begin to pray. Look at verse 4. Many of you are in the verse 4 of your life. You are in that point where it seems as if you don't know if you should take a decision or you don't take a decision. You are in that point of where it seems as if there is death confronting you from taking that action that God wants you to take. But you see, there is something the leprous men did. They asked the same question. Should we sit here till we die? I want to ask you. Should you sit in that same location where you are till you die? Do you want to be quiet till sickness finish everybody in your family? He said, should we sit down there till we die? If we say we will enter into the city, there is death there. If we remain here, we will also die. If we go into the Syrian, they will also kill us. Anyway, we will die. But look at what they said. It doesn't matter if there is death everywhere. I must rise and take an action. That is why I said to you, any man that will see the miraculous hand of God must arise and act when the Lord is asking you to act. Look at the next verse. They were in verse 4. Analyzing. Don't know you what to do. But see, the Bible says, and they arose. Where? In the what? Hear me, friends. They were in verse 4. Analyzing. The same way so many of you are in verse 4 of your life. You see, in verse 4, it seems as if there is no hope. In verse 4, it seems as if everything that is surrounding you is death. 
In verse 4, it seems as if everything surrounding you is fear. You are contemplating, should I rise or should, not, should I not rise? Even when God has given you a word about starting a business, you are thinking, should I start it or should I not start it? The word of God has come to you about healing the sick, about going deeper with God. You are still contemplating, should I take that step? Should I take that fast or should I not take that fast? But you see, when they finally decided to take the action, oh, there is something here. The Bible said they rose up in the twilight. It seems as if they rose up very early. Before somebody will come and discourage them, they say, let us go and act. I said to you, if there is anything to, if there is any time to act, at that time where there is still a light of faith in your spirit, man, that time you are praying and the Holy Ghost, you are believing God. Lord, I want to raise the dead. Lord, I want to heal the sick. And there is a light of faith that is stirred up in your spirit. If there is any time to act, it's that time. Act before somebody will quench it with story. They rose so very early before somebody will give them another decision and said to them, Where are you going? Don't you know that there is death in the camp? And they said, No, if we must take this action, we must take it now. I said to you, friend, if you must take the action that God is saying to you, now is the time you must take it. If you must take that fasting, now is the time you must do the fasting. If you must take that prayer, now is the time. Act when there is still faith in your spirit, man. Act when the voice of doubt has not risen all over you. If there is any time to read that book, it is now. If there is any time to make that visitation, it is now. I said to you, yes, you must take action. But hear me, friend, there is a time to take action. You must take action at the right time. Oh, they said to themselves, let's rise. The same thing I'm saying to you, beloved of God. Oh, that prayer that the Lord is calling you. My son, I need your attention 12 o'clock a.m. If there is any time to respond, it is now. Don't wait till they explain to you. Must you pray? If there is time to act, it is now. It is now. You have waited for too long. That is how you miss the glorious opportunity to do great things for God. The word of the Lord came to you. You are praying and believing God that you want to heal the sick. Possibly you were in your room. You were praying. Oh God. Oh God. The anointing to heal the sick. Oh God. Oh God. As I lay my hands, let the sick be healed. You were in the place of prayer. And the Lord came to you. Faith rise up in your spirit that you can do it. And that is how you went out. There was a sick man. The Holy Ghost said with your spirit, pray for him now. There is something bubbling in your spirit. And you know that if you pray now, surely that cripple will rise. Surely that man will he be healed. Something told you, why not just wait? Why not just wait? You are looking at your friend. May let my friend pass a little bit. I will pray for him. Let my friend pass. That is how that life of faith died up in your spirit man and you missed a glorious opportunity to do great things for God because you were in verse 4 you were at the point of analysis you were analyzing the situation you were afraid to take action when the Holy Ghost was saying it is now I need you to pray for that man that's your uncle that has been sick for too long you've been praying for him Lord can he be healed and in your place of prayer a light of faith stay up. Act that time when faith, the voice of faith is louder than the voice of doubt. If there is any time to act, it is the time when the voice of faith is louder than the voice of doubt. Because hear me friends, if you refuse to act, you will not see the wonders of God. They were in verse 4. Ah! They said, it doesn't matter if there is death. We must rise up early. We must rise up early. We must go to the camp of the enemy. You put somebody must rise up here and return back to that challenges in their family. Somebody must rise up here now as the faith of God is rising up in your spirit. Oh, somebody must rise and make a decree. Look at 
they were in verse 4 but thank God for those leprous men thank God for those leprous men oh they did not allow their leprosy to defeat them they did not allow their leprosy to limit them. They did not allow their circumstances to limit them. They said, if we are going to die, let us die. Men that would do exploit for God may rise up like Esther. Oh, I have said this like our father used to say. Men that said, if I perish, never perish. Men that said, if I perish, will never perish. And they took the step of faith. Now look at verse 6. Ah. Look at verses. What happened? Everybody read verses together. Look, everybody read verses together. For the Lord has done what? Shout it. For the Lord has done what? Is it make or made? Is it make or made? Even while they were thinking, they don't know that the Lord has gone ahead of them. I said to you, if you can only act, you will only discover the miracle of hand of God at the other side. Until you take a step, you will not know that God has gone ahead of you. Until you take a step, you will not know there is a miracle behind. If you stay in verse 4, you will not see verse 6. Even before the God of verse 6, God has already taken the care of verse 6. How will that school fees happen? Obey that instruction. There is a verse waiting for you already. Ah, I said to you, there is a verse waiting for you. But if you remain in verse 4, you will die. And if you die, it's not because God has not done anything. If you die in verse 4, it's not because God has not handled verse 6. There is verse 6 that has been taken care of already. But you will not see it until you take the step of faith. Peter never knew he could walk on the waters until he took the step of faith. Ah, I said to you, you may not know you can heal the sick until you take the step of faith. You may not know you can raise the dead until you take the step of faith. You cannot know that God can bless you until you start that business. Anything the Lord said you should do, come and rise up and take that step of faith. There is a verse that the Holy Ghost has taken care of. Oh, hear me and hear me well. God will always go ahead of you. If God will always go ahead of you, if the Lord asks you to do something, it's because the Lord has gone ahead of you. Hear me and hear me well. God is waiting for you at verse 6. Come on, leave us for. You don't know you carry fire until you begin to minister the Holy Ghost to people. You've been praying, Lord. Whosoever I lay my hands upon, let the Holy Ghost come upon them. You don't know you carry that anointing until you begin to impact men. Somebody must take that step. I am. It is only you that think you don't have power. It is only you that think there is nothing in you. No, 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 no. There is something greater in your spirit, man. It's just that you are in verse 4. It's just that you are in verse 4 of your life. You are still afraid. Oh. 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 Will you arise tonight? Will you arise tonight? Will you arise tonight? Will you arise tonight? Will you take that step? 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 Shabate kavrate kabarate komanata. Erekada balakati ana malaga da frate kabarate. Erekada balaga da frate kada balakati ya laga da frate kate. Esha ma 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 ma. Erekada kada kada ba 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 ba. Erekada kada 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 balaga da kada. Esha ma ba 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 ba. Erekada kada 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 balaga te. Ama ma ma ka ba te ka ba te. Erekada kada balaga da frate kate. Erekada ba 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 Hear me, friends. Hear me. One thing we do is this. When we go to our place of prayer, we just go there and we keep running. 
They think we are wasting time, but we are not wasting time. We are waiting for the light of faith to boil up in our spirit. We are waiting for divine signal to act. There is always a time to act. And for a believer to act, you must wait for that time of the rising of faith. You remain in your place of prayer. You keep growing. And once you sense the Holy Ghost is rising, once you begin to sense the Holy Ghost is rising, you step out in faith. You confront the mountain. You confront the mountain. You said to the mountain, I speak to you in the name of the Lord. It is time to go down now. It is time to go down. Lift up your hands wherever you are. Lift up your hands. Come and overcome Arata. Oh, mountains are coming down now. Oh, mighty man of war. Don't limit yourself again. Oh, savior to that family. I hear the Holy Ghost said to me, you are the savior of your family. Don't limit me again. Take that step I'm asking you to take. I hear the Holy Ghost saying, you are the deliverer of your family. I send you as a deliverer. Obey that instruction. Don't let circumstances stop you. Oh, don't let situations stop you. The Lord is anointing five persons now that will be delivered to their families. There is a strange oil coming upon five persons now. Holy Ghost in this hall, yes, that is one. In this place by my right, by my left, that strange oil that will bring deliverance to family. Holy Ghost, look at them. Look at that person running. Help that person running now. Holy Ghost, help them now. Holy Ghost, help them. There is somebody behind. Help that lady. Help that lady. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, help this one here, help this one. Holy Ghost, wherever they are, wherever they are, fresh baptism, fresh baptism, fresh, help this one, help him, help her, help that brother, fresh baptism, fresh baptism, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, yes, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, God, it's Guard it, yes, 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 yes. Go back and prove a command deliverance for your family. Go back and command deliverance for your family. Go back and command deliverance for your family. Go back and command deliverance for your family. All over this place, fresh fire. I heard the Holy Ghost said to me by that side. The Holy Ghost is coming by this side. There is somebody by this side that the Holy Ghost needs to encounter. Father. Father, whosoever is that person, yes, look at that sister, help her. Oh, shamana katia na makatia. Kriba na tuse frete kabanakata. Somebody burst out in the Holy Ghost. Somebody burst out in the Holy Ghost. Great things are happening here. I hear the Lord say to me again, it's an equipping service. I hear the Lord say to me again, it's an equipping service. Where are those prophets that the Lord wants to equip now? Holy Ghost, where are they? Look at them now. By my right, by my left. Help this sister, help her. Abatico Supratante. Akamandu Supratante. Where are the prophets? Yes. Where are the Deborahs? Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, help this sister. Help her. Lima Katiko Vrata. Oh, oh. There is fire all over the place. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Shela mama mama nagata vara tagati ala kapa. Shela mama 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 nagata vara tagata pala kete. Kama mati kapu kosika. Abate kete tento sika bante. Abu na mele kati ala makate. Raka bante kosovrete. Ela kete pala kete pala kati ala makata. Up your hand. I hear the Lord saying, 
I'm going to anoint with fresh oil. Fresh oil. Ah, yeah. He said he anointed my head with fresh oil in the midst of my enemies. Yes. Yes, you are in the midst of your enemies, but the Lord wants to anoint you. Wherever you are. Holy Ghost. Wow. 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 Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Holy Ghost just said to me, I'm moving like a gentle breeze. Watch him. Yes, just watch him now. He's coming. Oh my God. Oh my God. What is this? Holy Spirit. I am. What is this? Jesus. Jesus. Came on by. Oh Jesus. 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 There is an anointing for exploit. That is what the Lord said. It's coming upon three persons. The Lord said three. Three is an anointing for exploit. Yes, that is number one. Holy Ghost, where are they? There are three. This is number two. Look at number three, dear. Jesus. 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 Somebody cried, just put the attention of God. The person said, Lord, you must not let me go. He's a brother. Where is that brother? Holy Ghost. There is a brother that is crying for this. Look at him. Oh, thank you, Lord. Jesus. You see? You are watching me. I've stepped out of the boat. I've entered my own. I have stepped out of the boat. You must step out of your own. I have stepped out of the boat now. Jesus. 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 There is something that will come upon a lady and that lady will begin to run. Where is that lady now? Holy Ghost. Can't be too affronted. Look at her there. Holy Ghost, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus. 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 I am the man put in the eye. I took a better Katia. Jesus, what is this? Kimam Bambu Ayabuna Katiana. Oh, oh, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Hell no. Everyone in worship team, lift up your hands. The Lord told me he's anointing five persons in this place. Five. There is a strange oil coming upon them in the worship team right now. Holy Ghost, you said five, five, five. That is number one. You said five. Banti Cambrutos in Cabante. All over this place now, I release it. Take it now. Jesus, Jesus, yes. That is number two. Jesus, there are still remaining three. You said five. There are remaining three. Jesus, Sam Banti Cabantos in Rakanditus in Kavarante Panabahata. Could there somebody else there? Thank you. Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, the Holy Ghost said, I'm coming. 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 Who is that man? Who is that woman ready for him? Receive him now. Now. Oh, ha 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 Eliyaya, we just rejoice.
Let's go, let's go. Let's go. But if you are ready, the Holy Ghost can still do something before we go. My God. My God. That is great, strange, strange auction now. That is a strange auction. That is a strange auction. That is a strange auction. I hear the Lord just said to me now, and the spirit of this house, the Lord is releasing the anointing of this house upon three persons. The anointing of this house. There is an anointing in this house. It's coming upon three persons. The anointing of this house you are longing to receive what is in this house the Lord is giving you now for free there are three I've seen one person is remaining two lift up your hands everybody wherever this will be the last thing I will do then I'll pray where is that man longing for the gifts of the Holy Ghost that is in this place Oh, where is that boy? Where is that girl? Where is that man? Where is that boy? Holy Ghost, you gave it to me for free by following your servant. Somebody is crying for it now. Where is that man? Where is that girl? Wherever you are now. Holy Ghost.